The four Christians will stand trial for the attempted murder of the controversial florist. Britain's worst ever serial killing policeman. Found the severed head in a luxury food hamper. Terrorists may be targeting rural communities in keen ramblers. The suspect package was later identified as a baguette and it's thought it may have contained... But first we return now to our main story. Scientists have confirmed tonight that an island in the middle of the Barren Sea has disappeared, sparking fears around the world that sea levels may be rising much faster since records began. This report from our doomsday correspondent, Justin Rustin. Next. The helicopters and naval reconnaissance planes were out at dawn. This is where the island of Torchstromval used to be. Now there's nothing but sea. Once it was a landmass of some 45 square miles of low-lying rock, moss and scurvy grass. Now it isn't. Once it was uninhabited except for a scientific survey station. Now there's nowhere to uninhabit. Once it was... Everywhere that is, with the exception of Scotland, which will be considerably colder. Meaning it will be room temperature even if you're outside and not in a room at all. Nightfall, when there will be reduced visibility with prolonged patches of darkness. In darts, Phil the Power Taylor cruised into the final of the Texas Classic in Shearside. Having already outclassed Steve the Voltage Volts and Andy G-Force Griffin, he romped past Ted, just call me Ted Johansson, in straight legs. He now meets Dave, the final Finnamore, in the final. Ironically, it's the final's first final. Swimming now and... ...was in her living room watching TV when 47-year-old Lionel Clipspringer, who weighs 370 pounds, came through the ceiling, completely wrecking both her sofa and her sister Vonda, who was sitting on it. Uh, Mr. Clipspringer is a large individual. Most likely he was taking a shower and uh, slipped. Uh, he was naked when he came through Miss Helmig's ceiling and there was a quantity of water that came along with him. For guillemots and bearded seals, now they've gone. Once there was certainty in this world, now there's fear. And water, of course. 45 square miles of the stuff, more than there should be. This is the very northernmost tip of northern Norway. Somewhere over there is Russia. Somewhere over there is Iceland, Greenland, beyond that Canada, and beyond that, if you go far enough, you come back out over there again. It's that kind of place. Until recently... The most astonishing aspect of this story is that this is the third time that Mr. Clipspringer has come through Ms. Helmig ceiling in the last four years. The latest news we have on him at the moment is that he will remain in hospital overnight, his condition described as unwieldy. Julia? All right, Miles, thank you. Miles Anderton there with that story from up there in Spokane, Washington. Anthony, I don't want to be unkind, but you're kind of glad you don't live underneath that guy, aren't you? Three times in four years? Sheesh. You kind of wonder why he doesn't move to the ground floor. Right, Julia, I guess he kind of does move to the ground floor, right through the ceiling every few months. Isn't that the problem? Mm. Well, you know, this is just another one of those obesity stories that makes you wonder where we're headed with our health in this country. 370 pounds? That's two people. How does that happen? Well, you know, a lot of this has to do with education, with how we teach people to think about their food. It's yeah. a national issue for us right now. Education? Well, how much education do you need? You'd think once you get past, I don't know, say 300 pounds, you'd think you'd be starting to think, hey, are my pants tight or is it just me? It's 11 after 5 and time for Worldwide Weatherwide Update now with Alicia. Julia, thank you. Alicia, let me ask you this. You step out of the shower one morning and fall through the floor. Wouldn't you be starting to think, I don't know, hey, easy on the mayo? Well, Anthony, I guess that depends. Certainly if you're living in a Dot Abu Basama, Sudan right now, you'd be lucky to find a shower to get out of. Those guys here have not had rain for six years. Whoa, that's too dry. It is. And if we take a look at the satellite, we can... Impossible to say whether the island has sunk or whether the sea levels have risen. The first possibility is worrying enough, but it's the second possibility which is terrifying. Normally contented observers in any part of the world, where there's either land or sea. Because if the sea levels behind me here have indeed already risen by an amount sufficient to sink an island the size of Torstromval, then we may be facing the biggest environmental catastrophe in the history of the known world. And it may already be too late. Justin Rustin, ESN News, Nordcap, Norway. Justin Rustin there with that report from Norway. Stay with us. That report from Justin Rustin.
Still to come, you're watching ESN News with Katie Tate and Richard Pritchard. Coming up, our trousers becoming... A damp start to the day, giving way to flash flooding later. What at first might look like a flurry of snow, but is in fact flying mud. Hello and welcome to Look Out East with Phil Kirdridge and Sarah Holt. The front headlines from around the region where you are this night. Chaos in Beckles tonight as a 28-stone woman goes on the rampage. In Yoxford, sadness as a farmer stones himself to death. And it's official. The region's teachers are the ugliest in Europe. All that, and Russ is going to be here with the weather, aren't you, Russ? If you say so, Sarah, if you say so. Now, you're a Norfolk man, Russ. Indeed so, Philip. Ugly teachers there or not? Well, I, I should be a bit careful what I say here, what with the old wife being a teacher. Oh, goodness me, yes. So we wouldn't want to see you grounded again. No, indeed. Grounded again? Best not ask, I think, Sarah. No, best not, perhaps. I'm intrigued. Let's not go there. Moving on, moving on. I'm leaving Mrs Russ out of this altogether, then. What do we, uh, what do we think of our teachers? Well, speaking personally, I think a lot depends on the subject. Ah, oh, right. Now, you're thinking languages here, aren't you? I'm saying nothing, Philip. But we did have a French assistant one summer at the school I went to. Oh, don't, please. Honestly, you too. I'm not saying anything, Sarah. Best plan, mate. Don't go there, old lad. Mais non, n'allez pas là. Oh, n'allez pas là. Nous allons, nous allons. Well, she obviously taught you a good deal, Russ. <laughs> Alors, Sarah, n'allons nous pas là. Vraiment, vraiment. <laughs> Honestly, les hommes. More from Russ later. Now, drugs. It's a while since the... <laughs> Eat my gag! <laughs> Coming up later, we round up all the latest celebrity nosebleeds. Oh, yeah! But first, we go to a man lying in the gutter looking up at the stars. Coming at ya all the way from L.A. and dishing the dirt like a dinner lady turned dustman is Josh Cashman. Josh, how's it hanging? Like a beautiful painting in a very exclusive gallery. Oh, easy there, Tiger. Well, ask a stupid question. That's my job. And you're very good at it, honey. Well done, you. <laughs> so, the words star and wars not normally heard together in Hollywood. What's going on? Oh, my God! As we know, if we represent the history of the Earth as a 24-hour day, human beings evolved at one minute to midnight. But if the world is about to end, what time is it now? According to the UN, it's six seconds to midnight. The US, which has always been skeptical of what it calls environmental alarmists, takes a much more upbeat stance. The US Environmental Agency calculates we are only at nine seconds to midnight. At the other extreme, the World Wildlife Fund, who have traditionally been the most pessimistic of observers, think we might already be at one second to midnight. Enormous pressure uh, after his failure to deliver on the promise of a 12-month turnaround. Oh, you've got to admire his cojones, Mitchell, haven't you? He's not just flying by the seat of his pants, he's doing it blindfolded in a cave full of stalagmites. If he hadn't come in all nostriled up, giving it the big I am Charlie Tough Potatoes, he'd be sitting pretty on Gaffer Street now, necking back the bauble juice, singing Fly Me to the Moon with a pocket full of treacle, wouldn't he? And Lucas is like, your films suck. And Spielberg is like, hello, your films suck. And Lucas is like, yeah, right. And Spielberg is like, yeah, right. And you know, these guys were like a great team. And in a way, it's just really sad to see. I suppose it's kind of depressing in a way. Yeah, it is if you're like a total gimp point. Are you kidding? It's the best thing ever. It's pure sex. But first, more on our main story tonight. The island of Tuts Tromval in the Barents Sea has disappeared completely, sparking fears that sea levels around the world may be rising faster than scientists can measure. Many areas of Britain are preparing themselves for the worst and are of... Porter, Katie Willard is with one such community in Lincolnshire. Katie. Adam, yes. I'm here in the Lincolnshire village of Theddlethorpe St Helen, here on the north sea coast of Lincolnshire. Now, of course, Lincolnshire is exactly the kind of county that could end up vanishing from the face of the earth very soon indeed, if the scientists and geologists have their way. Now, this is actually a street in the village, and somewhere inside this house lives the Marby family who've occupied it ever since they moved here seven years ago. Now, Chris Marby works as a quantity surveyor in his 40s, and his wife, Amanda, works part-time as a relief and also looks after the upkeep of their marriage. And I think they're in here somewhere having a cup of coffee. Yes, here they are. I hope you don't mind me disturbing your cup of coffee. No, of course not. No. Now, Chris, I believe you've already started to think about what would happen if, as now seems likely, sea levels begin to rise horrifically in the very near future. Yes, that's right. Good. Amanda, what will it mean to you if this kitchen extension does become part of the North Sea? Well, obviously, we're always very aware of the sea. Yes. That's partly why we moved here, to be close to the sea. But what about being under it, though? Well, obviously, with all this news in the media about the island disappearing, it's a very worrying time for us. Yes. 
But we've done a bit of research on the internet, haven't we? Yes, we have, yes. Right, well, better let you get back to your coffee. Chris and Amanda Marby, thank you very much. Chris and Amanda Marby. A spokesperson for Manchester United denied that establishing other Manchester Uniteds in China, the US, Australia, Japan, Scotland, Ireland and London would make the club any less unique or be in any way confusing. Can a heart attack really be good for you? They said it couldn't happen, but it has. So what now? Is the past a thing of the past? A new server. Stay with us. Coming up. Shortly. I was captured by insurgents. I was beaten, of course. Tortured. Horribly tortured. It was a low point. The thing that got me through? The thought of telling the story. Getting the truth out there. That's what drove me to escape. I was shot at, of course. Horribly shot at. I lost a lot of skin. But I got the truth out there. I got the story out there. Would I do it again? In an instant. IBS, this is what we do for you. Clearly already trying to come to terms with the full enormity of what this potentially humanitarian disaster could spell out for them all across Lincolnshire. Now, one of the most distressing aspects of their circumstances for Chris and Amanda is that they have two children, both of whom are at school, at sea level, and are about to take important exams. And I think we'll find them both. Here are these two guys, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, who've been friends forever. And suddenly they're screaming at each other and there's handbags and biting and spitting and blood. It blew my mind. My mind was literally <laughs> They went, as they always do at this time of the year, to man the scientific survey station for a month. A group of six Norwegian scientists looking forward to the isolation of their instruments and the comfort of their measurements. But there were no instruments and there are no measurements. This is where... Since dawn this morning, searching for the missing island. Their task, hopeless. Their mission, pointless. Their helicopter, Italian. Again and again. Fine. Older sister, Lily. Now, she's 17, and she's actually Ben's older sister, and she's in the next room. And at 17, she's actually older than Ben, as well as being his sister, which, of course, is very much how it tends to be in families like this here in Lincolnshire. And she's 17. She's actually Ben's older sister, and she's also revising, but this time... For her A-levels. Lily, hi. Hi. I hope you don't mind me disturbing you from your revision for a moment. No, of course not. Now, of course, the Marbys aren't the only family in Thettlethorpe St. Mary to be hit by... If you don't love this story, you're either in a coma or dead. Or both. Thanks for that, Josh. That's all for now. We'll catch up with you later on. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> The guy's a genius. Now. Quick look at the news websites. A quick glance at the blogs. High build-up of pressure causing some stress clouds and possible storm rage. Brief roundup of the podcasts. Feddlethorpe has a population of some 580 different people, many of whom, like people all over Lincolnshire tonight, fearful that if sea levels have indeed already started to rise faster than evidence suggests, then everything they've spent their lives working towards could end up in Nottinghamshire. Now, Fred Claxby, you I'm come from... I'm not actually a... him. I'm just standing here. Right. Fred Claxby, you come from a long fishing line of families which have been intimately associated with the sea here on the Lincolnshire coast for many generations before them. Both your grandfather and your uncle lost their lives at sea. Your son is currently a member of the lifeboat crew just down the coast in Mablethorpe and you're going to be utterly devastated by the loss of this entire coastline as will many others like you, possibly within weeks. Well, as you can see, a mixture of sadness, misery and dread up here on the Lincolnshire coast tonight. But for now, it's back to Adam and Francis in the studio. Katie, thank you. Katie Willard with... That report from Lincolnshire. Other news now. Could be seeing uh, small businesses really getting squeezed and some, sadly, going to the wall. But isn't that just survival of the jungle, Mitchell? If Mad Derek wants to set up a business, he's given it all the flaps but he hasn't put in the donkey, why should I care if he sinks like Andy Gravel? I mean, if he's giving it all, you want eggs, I've got eggs that are so good they're practically am, but he hasn't got eggs, they're definitely not am, why should I sit up the long winter night doing a French lieutenant's woman with a juicy eyeball? He's gone purple, I'm supposed to sing the closing Frank, it's not going to happen, why should I? Gangs of teenage hoodies, high on heroin and crack, sweeping through neighbourhoods like this one behind me, night after night. Setting fire to cars, trees, family pets, in fact, anything and everything in their sight. While residents cower in their houses until dawn breaks, when they can venture back outside and begin the exhausting process of clearing up all over again. But could this actually happen? Councillor Tom... You're watching ESN News with Katie Tate and Richard Pritchard. Coming up next... 
Tibet or not Tibet controversy over suggestions that the man claiming to be the world's oldest living man is in fact dead. And Osama bin Haydn, how the world's most wanted man could actually be living in Las Vegas. All that is still to come up. But first, here's Melanie with the standing news. Now. Katie, thank you. I'm Melanie Bellamy and this is the standing news. Up until now, talk of global warming and rising sea levels has been worrying, but perhaps a little theoretical. Something we'll need to start worrying about someday soon. Now, as an island the size of an entire island disappears completely, it looks as if we may have finally run out of road. So what does this all mean for our planet? Now, as you know, ESN news reporter Nick Burnham is embedded with a shuttle crew on the International Space Station, and he joins us now in space. Nick, what's your sense from your unique vantage point up there of what's happening down here? Melanie, I have to say that from up here, there, there doesn't seem to be a great deal going on down there. Now, of course, that may just be the effect of perspective, uh, or indeed lack of food, but uh, nevertheless... Too late for a tragedy to occur, by which time it will have already happened. Penny Watson, look out east, Lowestoft. Penny Watson there in Lowestoft with that disturbing report. Yes, it certainly is disturbing. What's gone wrong with the world? Progress, I suppose. I mean, I'm just about old enough to remember the 60s. I don't mind admitting it. And yeah, there were drugs around. My goodness me, there were. But we didn't go around murdering each other. No. All you really wanted to do was take your clothes off and stumble about. Well, speak for yourself, obviously. Well, you're far too young to remember the 60s, Sarah. You're never but a mere girl. What do you reckon, Russ? What's gone wrong with the world? Ah, uh, well, yes, uh, let's just say I've no idea. Well, you must remember the 60s, though. Oh, I do indeed, Philip. A group of us did actually go to the Isle of Wight. Look out, here we go. Not actually to the festival, Sarah, I have to say, but a very memorable time, nonetheless, very memorable. A group of us in a tent. Ah, I see where this is going. I'm saying nothing, Philip. No, I don't blame you, old lad. Honestly, you too. And this would be with uh, young Mrs Russ, would it, before all the little Russes came along? No, it wasn't, as a matter of fact, no. Oh. Right. No. Right, it, before her time, perhaps. Yes, no, this was someone else, yes. Well, moving on, moving on. Yes, onwards and downwards. More from Russ later. Hmm. Yes, indeed. Now, teachers. We don't necessarily expect them all to look like Abby Titmus or... ...shows alarmingly that the maximum attention span for the modern 17-year-old now stands at just 11 seconds. The study offers a dystopian vision of a future where old people with longer attention spans will eventually die out, only to be replaced by a generation of people unable to do things like drive trains, stay married or perform surgical procedures of any kind. What's worse, it may already be too late to do anything about it. The young people here in this GCSE examination may look diligent enough but the truth is that most of them are likely to have forgotten the question they were answering long ago and by now may in all probability already be writing drivel. Richard Harbinger, PVS News, London. Richard Harbinger with that report. That report from Richard Harbinger there. You're watching PVS News with Adam Lockwood and Francis Walsh. Still to come, why worry has overtaken both cancer and heart disease as the biggest single cause of paranoia in Britain today. In Baghdad, we have a series of car bomb explosions to take you through. But first... Since first light, searching nautical square mile after nautical square mile of featureless ocean. Much of it nothing more than sea and wind in the hope of... The people around me have been sent up here to do a job. Uh, they've been trained to, uh, they've been trained to do that job and they're going to do it. And then, as one crew member expressed to me earlier, get the hell out of this crap house and have ourselves some gravity. Now, whether when they get back home, the water comes a few more inches up their trouser leg than it used to, I really don't think they're gonna be that concerned. Melanie. Nick, thank you. Nick Burnham there in space. Richard. Melanie, thank you. Melanie Bellamy with the standing news. Stay with us. Coming up. Still to come. Later in the programme, the main news tonight. But first. Coming up next, a roundup of everything that you've heard so far. Defence Department spokesman Elliot Schulte opined that this was a critical breakthrough in the war against terror, describing Mr. Al Zakari as number three on the so called dating list of wanted Al Qaeda terrorists. Our message to those who are left is they should be afraid. They know exactly where they are. And if we ever find that out, we're coming. Leanne Williams, IBS News, Washington.
Leanne Williams with that report from Washington. It's 20 after 5. Anthony, they keep bringing these men in. You wonder how many of them are left out there now. Well, Julia, I guess if they got to number three, there's two left. Right. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Bin Laden and some other guy. I don't think they're necessarily working their way up the list like that. Well, how many people are on the list anyway? Does anybody know? Anthony, if I recall, I believe there were 22 names on the list when the president first announced it. 22? That's not a list. It has to be a multiple of 10, doesn't it? I guess it depends what it's a list of. Hey, you know what I think they should do? They should just uh, take Bin Laden off the list. Just take him right off. See why he likes that. Make an announcement. It's 21 after 5. As of last week, Mr. Bin Laden has been dropped out of the top 100. That'd do it. Guy'd go nuts. Probably come flying right out of his cave. Right out into the open. Anthony, it's a thought. You heard it right here first. We'll be back with day 57 of the Peter Vicente murder trial in Los Angeles. Plus, the story of how scientists in Europe have managed to mislay an entire island. Trust us, this you got to hear. A new report out today reveals that attention spans for young people in Britain have fallen dramatically. The average attention span for a 17-year-old is now just 11 seconds. I'm Anita Dajapani and this is 15 seconds. The headlines this hour. At home, David Beckham denies it, and in Europe, it's all change. That's it for now. More later. See you shortly. In just 10 years' time, according to their predictions. So what will the world look like? Well, let's take a look. According to their projections, this is how London will look in 10 years' time. Almost unrecognisable. By contrast, New York will look like this. Exactly the same. The Caribbean could look like this. Venice will look like this. While Las Vegas a decade on would look like this. It's certainly a frightening... Attention spans for Britain's teenagers have... ...backlog of cloud, meaning that some regions can expect severe weather delays, with weather not arriving until late morning, and some of those... ...out today suggest that attention spans... ...in a gold lame jacket. All that coming up later on Film and Movie News. But first, we take a look at Shadows of Blood. The new chiller that shows Hollywood's obsession with horror is far from over. I spoke to the film's child star, the ubiquitous wonderkind, Callie Quinn. We've all heard the expression, never work with children or animals, but they're going to have to change that. To never work with children or animals, but always work with Callie Quinn. Really? Cool. You're a far better actor than anyone your age has any right to be. I don't know how you do it. It's incredible. Thanks, Sarah. Reports of stationary traffic all over the country today in all directions. Engineering and traffic jams are the major culprits. Out onto the roads now. How I dress in my private life is up to me. And believe me, I can be as raunchy as the next man. But when I come to school in the morning, I'm a teacher. I leave my appearance outside the gate. Margaret Wilson, thank you. Well, obviously, beauty or beast, this is one debate that will continue to stampede its way through the region's blackboard jungles for some time to come. Now back to Sarah and Philip in the studio. Nick, thank you. Nick Andrews with that report from Leyston. Interesting stuff. It certainly is. That headmistress makes a good point, though. We can't all be Carol Smiley. That's true. I used to have a teacher who was a spitting image of Oliver Hardy. Really? Moustache the lot. I imagine you had a good time thinking up nicknames for him. Well, fat so, obviously. Yes, of course. Now, Russ, what sort of a weekend have you got for us? No more tornadoes, I hope. <laughs> well, I'll do my best, sir. I'll do my best. No, a really quite a pleasant weekend in store this weekend. We'll still have that drizzle, obviously, but... A729, Jaffa's hat, traffic crawling at a snail's pace. Avoid that if you can. M9 at the Maracas. Probably best to find an alternative jam. A30. Attention span. Attention... There you were in your last film acting Russell Crowe off the screen and you made him look like a big hairy idiot. I'm going clock face trying to turn sweat into jam here. This is a classic case of the EU dropping their trousers and fighting on my breakfast, isn't it? A98, Marxist salute, exactly what you'd expect for this time of day at this time of year. A773, the potato wedge, again, as you'd expect, much of a muchness. A832, Ted Hughes intersection. There you go. What's all the fuss about? You never cared when the island was there, so you shouldn't care about it now that it's gone. You're all eco-freaky, hemp-weaving hypocrites. That's from Robert. Thanks for that, Robert. I live in Cornwall. Since daybreak again this morning, beneath them a sea stretching in every conceivable direction at once, 
making it almost incredibly intelligent without being precocious, utterly charming without being ingratiating, moving without being sentimental, and just so genuinely lovely and charming and intelligent, and bright and smart and clever, talented. As I always say to the girls at my line dancing class, I think global warming is a good thing if it means we get a nice summer, says Margaret in Kent, echoing a lot of emails we're receiving. The government should have seen this coming. It's always the same. An island has to sink before anyone does anything. That's from Colin. Thanks, Colin. Finding a babysitter is a nightmare. I have to get my children to do it, says Joanne. I think that's in relation to our earlier report on childcare. Reopened the row when he said that women football players should do that sexy grunting the tennis chicks do. However, a spokesman for Callie Quinn, it's just been such a good laugh. I mean, that, that's not work, is it? And it's just been so great hanging out. It's almost been as cool as, as watching your films. It's just been really, really cool. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's been really cool. Cool. Callie Quinn there. What a charming young man he is. And at the tender age of nine, he's already provided some star turns to savour. Sadly, not in this film, though, in which he is atrocious. His performance is so nauseating, I thought I was going to spew with such organ-shattering ferocity my liquefied kidneys would be forced out of my nose. They say small children should be seen and not heard. In this case, though, that should be sacked and not paid. If this is a taste of things to come, let's hope he's burnt out and washed up by ten. Here are just a few words that run through your mind while watching him. Slurry. Squalor. Diseased. Meanwhile, Mr. Vincenti himself, as he has done for most of this trial, chose to sit impassively on his chair. This is Lauren Peterson for IBS News, Los Angeles. Lauren Peterson there at the Vicente trial in Los Angeles. You're watching IBS News with Julia Reagan and Anthony Markovitz. Anthony, you start to wonder just what else that trial has left. Julia, you do. I'll tell you one thing. If you marry your sister, you got complications. I don't care how good looking she is. All right. It's a little after 535. If sea levels are indeed already rising faster than we thought they were going to rise in the future, then adapt. That concentrated area of depression said to remain possibly for some years. The kind of weather that could frighten pets and some religious people. The sea is a cruel mistress. Yet again, the sea has behaved unconscionably. It's time to address this terrible problem that is the sea. Interesting take there from Captain Neddy. Thanks, Captain. I'm glad I didn't buy a house there. I wasn't going to, but I'm glad I didn't anyway. That's from Paul in Berkshire. Few of the signs that could signify impending catastrophe. Sea levels rise. Temperatures rise. House prices rise. Like looking for a rocky needle in some impossibly wet and shifting haystack. The issue of racism in chess has reared its ugly head once again. Watery way of life is going to become very much the norm for people in places like New Romney, currently four miles inland from here, as they go about their daily lives. I have with me increase in extinct species, seas boil. A very pleasant day ahead for most of us. Spants of water, literally a sea of waves. Assuming for the moment that our assumptions coming up at the top of the hour. But right now we've got Alicia coming right at you with the weather news. And Alicia, I believe you have an exclusive for us from Europe today. Julia, that's correct, I do. Oh boy, I love this story. Me too. Scientists in Europe would appear to have lost an island. Yep, you heard me right. They've lost an entire island, together with the survey station they have on it. Keep drinking the wine, fellas.